The Nintendo Wii U has had a difficult life. The system was destined to fail as soon as it arrived and ultimately it sold only 13 million consoles worldwide. With the newest announcements of Pikmin 3 Deluxe and the rumoured Super Mario 3D World Deluxe heading over to the Nintendo Switch, many Wii U owners are probably wondering, why did I even bother with this system? For all intents and purposes, the Wii U is a forgotten memory for not only consumers but Nintendo themselves, who barely acknowledge its existence. But the Nintendo Wii U has one massive advantage over the competition, including the Nintendo Switch, and that is, it's probably the best modded console going around. We just heard the stories of Pikmin 3 being announced for the Nintendo Switch, and many people are wondering what's happening with the Nintendo Wii U. Is it time to really just close the chapter on the Wii U itself? and just completely forget about it. Well, I'm here today to tell you that the Nintendo Wii U is an absolute awesome system, and it's definitely something that you should consider picking up if you can find one at a cheap price. As we know, the Wii U is backward compatible with the Nintendo Wii out of the box, but with a modded system, it also unlocks GameCube games that run upscaled at 1080p at full speed. It also supports many controllers, and even allows for emulation of the broadband adapter. With emulation, you can also play Nintendo 64 games as well. And its virtual console, at least in the making of this episode, is still available. When it comes to retro, the Switch doesn't even come close. In fact, many other modded consoles we've covered on the channel don't either. The Wii U has a massive range of systems that it can run, and it runs them well. With that, I ended up picking up a premium refurbished Wii U system from GameStop. So let's take it out of the box, get it modded, and see what it's capable of. Okay, so this is our refurbished Nintendo Wii U. This has not been opened, so let's go ahead and open this together and see uh, what, what we're dealing with here. The last one we had on the channel was actually in really good shape, um, so I'm hopeful that this one uh, will be as well. But uh, that will obviously remain to be seen. Go ahead and open this up and see what we got. Now, last time we got a, um, a black uh, control pad with a white system. This time, let's see what we got. Uh, oh, we got, look at this. We got uh, a Legend of Zelda. Wow, that's actually in really good shape. So yeah, we're gonna be giving this away on the channel, guys. So that's, uh, that's pretty awesome, look at that. Um, I mean, it's got some, it's definitely got some scratches here and there. I mean, there's two pretty deep scratches by the D-pad, but um, overall, um, you know, first impressions, I guess, is that this is in pretty decent shape. So let's move on. A whole bunch of packing material we don't care about. And uh, here is, oh, look at this. Here is the system. Oh my God, that, that has been, well, that's a little beat up. Look at that. That that has just been, ooh, that's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty rough. Um, I gotta say, uh, that's uh, that's looking quite scrap. You can tell they've just used the uh, magic eraser, and someone's just gone way too crazy with that magic eraser. Um, the front, oh, the front looks pretty beat up as well. This is uh, this this system. Uh, is interesting. Uh, refurbished? Well, I mean, I guess that's one way you could you could call it. But um, to me, it looks a little a little knocked around. But that control pad um, looks pretty good. And then, of course, you get the uh, the extras. You get an HDMI cable, and you get the the uh, Wii sensor bar, and you get the uh, power supply, and you get a bunch of instructions that no one cares about, and also get a charging uh, kit as well. So, look, not as good as last time. Um, like the control pad, like the control pad uh, a lot. Um, let's peel this off. Uh, yeah, this control pad's in actually pretty good shape. Uh, it's got it's got a couple of it's got a couple of uh, issues, but. Overall, it's it's in pretty good shape, and man, I love the uh, the Legend of Zelda uh, special edition they got going on here. But uh, can't say the same thing about this unit. It's kind of what you normally get um, from GameStop, 
but um, you know, if we had the white one, I think these scratches would be a lot more concealed, but because it's the black 32 gigabyte unit, it is something that is a lot more apparent. But in any case, let's go ahead and power this baby on, get it modded up, and let me show you some of the amazing and cool things you can do with a Nintendo Wii U in 2020. Before we get into the modding of the system, we want to make sure that it's actually working. This is a premium refurbished system from GameStop after all, so we never really know what to expect. After syncing up the controller with the system and inserting a game, Ninja Gaiden 3, Razor's Edge, everything seems to work well. So let's go ahead and proceed and get this thing modded. Modding the Nintendo Wii U is simple enough. But as always, I'm going to skip over this in the video because these guides tend to change as time goes by. But if you want a step-by-step -step easy modding guide, look no further than the website weu.hacks.guide. This process will take about 10 minutes, and once you're done, you'll have an icon on your menu known as Hacksche. This is our custom firmware that you'll need to launch every time you power on the system and want to run homebrew on the Nintendo Wii U. One of the biggest omissions that the Nintendo Wii U had over the Wii was the removal of GameCube games. But thanks to some clever homebrew, you can restore GameCube games on the Nintendo Wii U. And in my opinion, it's the best way to experience Nintendo GameCube games outside of using something like Dolphin. Okay, so let's start out with the big one, GameCube. Natively, the Wii U does not support the Nintendo GameCube. That feature was famously omitted by Nintendo. The Wii U is backward compatible with the Nintendo Wii and contains what's known as the Virtual Wii environment that will put the system in Wii mode. And from here, as we know, it's possible to install the Wii Homebrew Launcher and use a homebrew tool known as Nintendont. Nintendont will allow you to run GameCube titles from either SD card or USB and is a must-own utility for any modded Wii U. It works easily, supports a wide range of gamepads, allows you to set things like widescreen, progressive scan modes and even enable broadband adapter emulation so you can play Mario Kart Double Dash online. In short, Nintendont on the Wii U opens two generations of Nintendo games on one system and it needs to be a part of your library. Let's move on to Nintendo 64. And there are two options here, Homebrew and the Virtual Console. Let's check out both. Wii 64 is a port of the popular multi-OS emulator Moopin64 to the Nintendo Wii. And of course, we can run this emulator using the Virtual Wii mode on the Nintendo Wii U. While there is no native Wii U Nintendo 64 emulator, Wii 64 will get the job done, and it's been receiving updates via a fork known as Not64 and can run many Nintendo 64 games at full speed. It's certainly not perfect, but it's impressive and handles many different controllers and peripherals, things like save states, and it's easy enough to just jump in and play. And of course, there's the Nintendo Virtual Console, which is home to Nintendo 64 games that you can purchase and play. At one time, there were 21 titles to choose from, but some have appeared to have been delisted. Still, the Virtual Console is one of the best reasons to enjoy the Nintendo Wii U, and you also get access to other game systems like the TurboGrafx-16, Game Boy Advance, NES, Super NES, Sega Genesis, and even Nintendo Wii digital titles can be purchased through the service. It's inevitable that the Wii U eShop will close down at some point. So it's probably a good idea to jump in there and pick up what you need before that day comes. Now, of course, Super Mario 64 is playable through emulation or the virtual console. But now, thanks to the Super Mario PC recompilation project, the Clean Room Reverse Engineered Super Mario 64 game, there has been a native port over to the Nintendo Wii U. And let me tell you, this is impressive. With widescreen 1080p 60 frames per second visuals, this PC port is appearing on all sorts of devices and is now available on the Nintendo Wii U. As you can see, it's one of the things that you definitely want to check out. And then of course, there's traditional emulation and my pick of the best has to be RetroArch. Now of course, we've covered RetroArch many times before on the channel over many different systems, but in general, it rocks on the Nintendo Wii U, handling many different cores with excellent speeds. 
MAME emulation is a standout for me with Neo Geo, Capcom, CPS2, Midway games like NBA Jam all running at full speed. And then of course you get things like Sega Genesis with the Genesis Plus GX emulator, as well as Game Boy Advance, NES, Turbo Graphics, and Super NES emulation are all very well represented as well. We are still seeing more titles get released for the Nintendo Wii U in 2020, albeit at a trickle. But it's always frustrating knowing that the game may come from a different region and will not play on your system. However, there is a simple homebrew tool known as Our Loader that will allow you to play any region game on your Wii U system, completely bypassing the region lockouts. There are also methods to patch a region lockout permanently on your system if you prefer to do that. And we've only touched on a sample of what the Wii U can do. There are some very impressive utilities and applications that allow for loading of games from USB devices, things like virtual console game injectors and more. And of course, you can natively play any Nintendo Wii and Wii U game, and there are some excellent titles. Sure, it's true that many of them now exist on the Nintendo Switch, but for some of them, especially the older Wii titles, may never be brought forward. While it's true that the Nintendo Wii U is mostly irrelevant these days, for me, it's one of the best retro and emulation systems out there. The amount of things that it can run quite honestly is unmatched unless you have access to a fast PC. And I think if you want to get into homebrew and emulation, the Wii U may just be the thing for you. But for me, the Nintendo Wii U represents probably the best retro emulation box that you can get your hands on to date. It really beats something like the Raspberry Pi, and it also allows you to play GameCube, Nintendo Wii, and Wii U games, also coupled with the virtual console that's still around and working at least for the current duration of time, makes it a very compelling system to own. Now, before I go, guys, I do want to mention that we will be giving away the Nintendo Wii U that you saw in this episode to one lucky winner. And in order to get entered, just click on the competition link in the description below. I will be drawing the winner out in about two weeks. So get yourself entered and good luck. We will ship this to anyone around the world. So there's no issues if you're from overseas and you're not sure about entering. Get yourself entered and good luck. We'll be drawing that winner in a couple of weeks. Well, guys, that will do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this episode, you know what to do. Leave me a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.